Hey, what's happening everybody? My name is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In today's tutorial, I wanna talk about how to create an embed that is responsive. If I try to share, I have a previous video that I built, how I built my portfolio website in Gatsby.js. If I share this, and I wanna embed this, say on my website, or if you wanna embed this, because this video is super awesome, spared no expense in that advertising. Anyways, in the embed, I can copy and paste this iframe, but if I drop it in, if I copy this information, start at zero one, sure, and I'm using CodePen, if I drop it in, eventually will show up, maybe. But the problem is when I resize my browser, it doesn't resize the video, it just kind of stays there. So I wanna create some sort of framework whereby when I resize my screen or play on a mobile device or on an iPad that this video plays and scales and becomes responsive. And I'll show you how to do that right now. One quick thing before we get started in this tutorial, I'm working on a project and I'd love for your help, YouTube audience. I have a little link down here on my website, adesignerwhocodes.com slash pound sign YouTube or just clicking on the YouTube button. I have a form and I'm looking in this form for you if you have any examples that you've done in your own work that you can showcase that I can then showcase to the rest of the world. I'd love to showcase your design through code. If you're up for it, submit some information about what you've done, and if it looks good, I'm gonna go through a little vetting process, I'd love to send you a sticker and a thank you note and a token of my appreciation. So if you are one of those people who also relates to the term a designer who codes and you have some example of work to share that you're okay with me sharing publicly, head to my website, which is a designer who codes.com and you can click on the button YouTube and find the form there. And again, if I do select your work and I do put it up publicly, I will send you a beautiful thank you note and a sticker of a design her codes. And with that, let's get back to this tutorial. All right, welcome back. Once again, my name is Hayden Adams with A Design Her Codes, and this channel is all about helping you become a better web designer by learning how to code. I've got tons of examples and information and even courses on my website, A Designer Who Codes. So if you're curious, about even more information about how you can become a better web designer by learning how to code, check out more of my content. If you've loved this channel, if you've watched a few, don't forget to subscribe and let's go forward. So if I close my website down, what I was talking about before was that I wanted to make this video that was embedded, I wanna make it responsive. And the problem is that by default, YouTube doesn't do that. Now, side note, Vimeo, you do rock for this reason. They're in bed, you have to pay for the embeds on Vimeo, but you can embed a responsive design in Vimeo, but not in YouTube. I guess that's what you pay for with the YouTube world. So we have to do a little trickery a little bit to just kind of trick it around a little bit and fix it up. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually add a container around this iframe. So I'm gonna call this container div, class equals, I'm gonna say video wrapper. And then I'm gonna put something down here and I'll close the div. Come on, if I can type properly, there we go. And then let's properly indent this. I said everything indented. I'm used to using Visual Studio Code and every so often, there we go, that'll indent that piece of this iframe right here. So what I wanna do is I wanna put a class called video wrapper. What we have to do is we have to use the position relative slash absolute for this to move around. Because the iframe fills up its own space, we have to create a relative positioning for this video to sit in. And then what's gonna happen is the video wrapper is going to adjust in size thereby making the iframe video adjust in size. So what I'm gonna do is, inside my CSS, I'm gonna say video, wow, typing this morning is quite fun. Video wrapper, and then we'll add our curly brackets, and we're gonna say position 
is relative. If you're new to positioning, the absolute is dangerous in the fact that it's absolute. It's not going to move. However, it becomes less dangerous when our parent or the video wrapper becomes relative. And what happens is that the absolute becomes relative to the actual container, thereby making it not so absolute per se. So in the video wrapper, I'm going to say position relative, and I'm going to say padding bottom. Now this one's important because what's going to happen is that by default, this video wrapper doesn't have anything in it. Even though there is an iframe, by saying relative, there's nothing really containing in this space. Even though we see there is, we have to push down the appropriate amount of padding in order to work the appropriate ratio of size. So if you think about it, it's width to height. So if I push down, how far does it push across? Well, thankfully, some geniuses out there figured out that the padding bottom for a 16, uh, 16 by 9 video, excuse me, is 56.25%. Or if you want to put a comment in, you can then say that, let me put this one here, command slash to add comments, that that equals 16 by 9. So if we scoot this guy over a little bit, Command right bracket and command left bracket, tab things left or right. And it's easy in hitting the tab key because yes, that does work, but I don't really hit the delete key back. I kind of just naturally hit the command right bracket, command left bracket. So padding bottom equates to 56.25, which equals a 16 by nine ratio, which I'm assuming your videos are all are because that's the general size of YouTube. And then the height I'm gonna say is zero. So that's gonna hold our video wrapper, but we then have to make the iframe do something as well. We could add another div if you wanted to, but I always say less code the better. And since we already have the iframe working within the video wrapper, let's just say, let me pull this a little bit lower for right now. We're gonna bring you back, don't you worry. I'm gonna say video wrapper iframe and this is going to affect all the iframes in the video wrapper and i'll curly bracket this guy and this one becomes a position of absolute now it's absolute relative so the reason why we can use the absolute positioning is the relative up top that's really important so here i'm going to say top zero left zero to make sure it sits in the top left and then we're gonna make the iframe equate to 100% of the size of the video wrapper. We're gonna say width 100% and height 100%. Now again, whoa, there it is, that's better. <laughs> yes, I did not make my div a particular size. So we're gonna change that just so you can see a reaction to this piece. But note how that video, oh, that's a, Big video, I didn't really anticipate that part showing up. But if I save this, and let's change the view and let's see what happens. So because this video fills that entire size, this padding bottom is the success to this whole piece. So if I change view, I'm gonna say full page view. There is a massive video. Now watch, now watch what happens. Sorry, code pen ad, you're going away that my video scales to the size of my div. Now it scales to the width, but the height becomes equated to that. So even though our height is 56.25, the width controls the overall size, but the padding of the height works with the ratio, thereby my video sits in the perfect size. And if I change view, and back to editor view. And once again, if I were to just say for right now that the max width was 200 more, just so we can see it actually in action. Oh, you know what? I can't do the video wrapper. I have to go above the video wrapper. So I'm sorry, let's create a parent div. Let's just say div class max width 200. 
Normally I do not advocate naming your divs by specific numbers, but in demonstration purposes only, I do forgive you. So let's then nest the divs and then we'll push out those. And there it goes that piece. So yes, if I were to have a max width 200, the reason why I don't like naming things with fixed numbers is because let's say I wanna change the number and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, how many times have I said max width 200 in all of my HTML, CSS, and anywhere else? So I'd like to say just max width or single call or something else that doesn't have a number, but I just wanted to show it to you for demonstration purposes only. So in the max width 200, I will say max width 200 and I will say max width 200 pixels and there it goes now it's nice and small I had to move not the video wrapper because if we think about it that video wrapper is relative and I'm not going to touch the width or height it's just going to move relative to the size into its parent and since if this is 300 then the video becomes 300 pixels to the width which then the padding bottom equals 56.25. If for example purposes, and I'll just take this out, if I said 100%, that would be a square. So if I had a square video, then I could use the square design. But some great genius figured out that 16 by nine, I imagine if you divide nine by 16, you get 56.25%. So all you have to do is do a ratio and that's how you get the percent of padding bottom. And using the video wrapper iframe, your video now becomes scalable on anything you do. And this will work in HTML, CSS, and all the other frameworks. If you are working in Gatsby, then of course you're just gonna change the class to the class name and you're all set. And I believe Gatsby does require a title, but this is how you can create a responsive video inside of your website. I'm passionate about teaching designers how to become better web designers by learning how to code. And my first two courses are up on my website at courses.adesignerwhocodes. These two are all about Gatsby. If you're brand new and you've watched these Gatsby websites, you're thinking, I wanna learn how to use Gatsby. Well, this course is for you. How to set up, build, and deploy your first Gatsby website will take you from start to finish on building your first website. If you wanna take it a step further, then how to build a blog in Gatsby.js goes through the, not just the beginner, but more the intermediate usages of Gatsby. So if you are looking to better your web skills, I encourage you to take a look at these courses, sign up and become a better web designer by learning how to code in these first two courses about Gatsby.js. Once again, I'm Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes.